Hi, welcome back to Cinesum. This movie name will be revealed at the end. Please watch till the end. Henry has returned to Hong Kong after serving in the U.S. service for times, looking to start a career as a school teacher. He goes to his former academy, Takai Secondary. The top notes that he doesn't have experience in tutoring, but after being shown a recommendation letter from an advanced functionary, he's given the job. Before Henry leaves, the top informs him that the class he's assigned to educate is the worst one of their academy. The morning of his first day at academy, Henry walks into the class to see that it is in absolute chaos. Some scholars are sleeping, others are singing, some are playing videotape games, while a good number of them are cooking Raymond on a movable cook stove. Indeed after the school teacher walks in, they fully ignore him and continue what they're doing. Henry tries to get their attention, but they pretend to not hear him. He gives up trying to divert their attention and goes around the classroom opining on the effects they're formerly doing. The scholars who are cooking are asked to eat lower Raymond because it contains too important sodium. Henry also approaches a Joe named Sufa playing ukulele and helps him with it. Also, he warns a gamer Sprat against the radiation he might admit from gaping at the screen all day. When the scholars eventually start hearkening to him, he introduces himself and writes his name and phone number on the board. The scholars laugh because his handwriting is unattractive. Also, someone from the scholars calls him and asks him to leave the class, but Henry laughs it off. The kiddies ignore him yet again and continue with the conditioning they were doing before his appearance. Having enough of it, Henry uses a rubber band and chalk to spark the fire sprinkler in the room. The scholars snappily spread out to keep themselves from getting wet. He eventually gets their full attention and officially welcomes them to his class. After class, a group of five lowest-ranking scholars gathers in the sports force room to bomb. The leader of the group, Jack, has a crush on an A-grade pupil from another class. The others find him gaping at her picture and make fun of him. The group has a contest with the rich and putrefied kitties from the academy's basketball platoon. They enter the force room and mock Jack as usual because he's poor. Latterly, the basketball platoon is rehearsing while Jack and the group watch them from hard. Jack drops a bottle to the court which causes the platoon leader to fall. The group laughs but is given detention by the academy's English school teacher Miss Liang. To avoid detention, they play a knavery on her and run down when she's busy drawing her office. Away, the Academy's star is worried because the Education Board is planning to abate 20% of their periodic backing. The people from the board come to take a stint of the Academy to check where the finances are being used. At the same time, Henry enters the classroom where the scholars have set up a pail of water to prank him. But his revulsions work briskly than the falling pail and he's suitable to push it down. The scholars who had been staying to make fun of him are left shocked. Henry asks for Jack's packet of cigarettes, knowing that he smokes. Jack simply hands him the pack curious as to what he's about to do. Also, Henry asks Zufa to name the three constituents that are in a cigarette. When he answers the question rightly, he's let to skip class for the day. Everyone starts to bang on their divisions, demanding that they should get to skip class as well. When they stop, he hands them all a cigarette and asks them to dissect it. Henry knows that if he simply mentions the effect it has on their health, they won't take it seriously. So rather, he asks them about the issues of smoking cigarettes and explains how Navigator forms in their lungs. For the first time, they pay attention to the school teacher and are actually interested in literacy. After the bell rings, he asks them to return the cigarettes, and the scholars reluctantly agree. That day in the cafeteria, the captain of the basketball platoon, makes one of Jack's friend Bruce trip on his leg. This gives rise to an argument between the groups which soon turns into a fight. They throw food and tables at each other, destroying the place. Latterly, Henry is informed that five scholars from his class have been temporarily suspended for starting the fight. Henry finds Jack fighting his opponent in the hallway and stops them. On being asked to calm down, Jack accuses the academy of being illegal because the rich kiddies get no discipline. That day after academy, Henry goes through the lines of all five scholars to find out further about them. The first Joe is named Zufa, the son of a Pakistani emigrant who's always discerned against because of his race. He's frequently indicted of stealing by the Bobbies. In his neighborhood, Zufa's only wish in his life is to become a musician. The alternate pupil is a girl named Deenan. She was a disappointment to her father ever since her birth because he always wanted a son. Her entire life, Deenan has been trying to gain her father's respect. She indeed cut her hair to a shorter length and played with buses to pretend to be a boy, yet, her father doesn't watch about her while he treats her youngish family like a Napoleon. Also, there are sisters named Bruce and Chris. Their mama ran down with a man when they were only kitties which turned their father into an alcoholic. The sisters only had each other to calculate on while growing up. Bruce came hung up with videotape games to escape reality. 
while Chris worked hard in a grocery store to make plutocrat for the family. Incipiently, Henry can find no information about Jack's family background. In the ensuing scene, we see Jack working at a eatery as a server. An MMA gambler Gianying arrives at the eatery with his business mates. When Gianying is an apostrophe T looking, Jack steals his fancy lighter but is caught. Gianying's men beat him up as he checks Jack's ID. After chancing out that he's a pupil, he gives him some plutocrat and offers him a job as their food delivery man. Nearly differently, Henry visits Zufa's home and finds him running down from his father and his associates. After stealing a ticket, he helps him at first, but after chancing out why he's being chased, he takes the father's side. Also, he and Zufa come to hang out at the ground. To motivate Zufa into doing whatever he wants, Henry sings with a band performing in the thoroughfares. Seconds laterally, Zufa joins him and sings in front of people for the first time. After being bullied at Academy times agone. Dot meanwhile, Bruce and Chris's father comes home late like always and orders them to bring him a beer from the store. When the sisters refuse, he yells at them to get out of his house. The coming day, Henry meets with their father and convinces him to go to recovery for his son's good. In the meantime, Deanan's father brings her a bag of makeup products and asks her to act like a girl for formerly. Deanan is furious at him for always making her sense like she isn't good enough. She applies the makeup on her youngish family and sneaks out of the house with the auto key. She is about to drive down in her father's auto, but is stopped by Henry at the right moment. He tells her that driving without a license is illegal and suggests an volition. Following that, they go to a go-kart racetrack. Henry also invites her father and makes them race. The father and son show no mercy to each other during the race and ultimately end up outside the track. Suddenly, Deanan's go-kart is hit by a vehicle, but she manages to dodge it. Ignorant of this, her father cries mourning his son's death. Deanan realizes that he does in fact love her and hugs him. The coming day at Academy, Bruce and Chris, along with a group, are transferred to a recuperation center to solicit a recovering alcoholic. They're surprised to see that the person they have to solicit is their father. The scholars ask him how he started to drink. The man answers that he loved his woman dearly but she left him at the smallest point of his life. Hence, he started to drink and forgot that he'd two kitties to take care of. The man doesn't reveal that Bruce and Chris are his sons but apologizes to them. By the end of it, the sisters are left crying. Nearly differently, Jack has started to work for the MMA gambler Gianying. He offers Jack a lot of plutocrat to medicine a fighter's drink in the coming game. Jack is reticent but is forced into accepting the offer. On the day of the fight, Gianying sponsors a fighter but bets plutocrat on his loss. Jack puts medicines on the fighter's drink but is caught while doing so. Before he can condemn Gianying, he is beaten up and locked inside a locker. A while laterally, Henry arrives there and asks the fighters if they've seen his pupil. The men ask him to return home, but Jack, from inside the locker, yells for help. After chancing out he's being trapped, Henry attacks them and overpowers them fluently. When the fighters step it, it gets a bit violent, but Henry dodges their attacks efficiently. By the end of it, he knocks out their stylish fighter who was supposed to contend in a many twinkles. In the ensuing scene, they're at the sanitarium where Henry gets treated for his injuries. Jack tries to reveal the verity about Gianying, but is made to shut up. The news makes it to the TV and Henry starts being known as the man who beat up a professional fighter to save his pupil. His fashionability in academy grows and the scholars start to admire him. They indeed get up to drink him to the class in discrepancy to how they were before. A flashback shows us that Henry used to be a prankster when he was in academy. He indeed threw water balloons at a pupil who was playing piano for the parents in an event. Latterly, he fought the same pupil and broke his hand. He was suspended for the fight after which he to fly to the States. Starting that day, the scholars pay attention when Henry teaches in class and study hard for the forthcoming council entrance test. Everyone is doing great except Bruce who has grown addicted to capsules. It turns out that while Chris turned to videotape games to avoid his family's problem, Bruce started doing medicines. Because he's unfocused, he does veritably poorly in the mock entrance test. Henry promises to help him, but Bruce grows more depressed with time. Ultimately, he jumps off the deck of their house. He's rushed to the sanitarium and goes into a coma. The media twists the news and blames it on the academy and Henry for what Bruce did. The officers from the education board interview Henry and decide to drop his tutoring license. When he packs his effects and leaves the academy, the scholars chase him before, asking him to stay. They're agonized by his absence, but they know that they should ace their forthcoming test to make him proud. From that day, they study doubly as hard to prove to the board that Henry is a good school teacher. On the day of the test, Jack, along with all his classmates, get a textbook from Henry. 
asking them to meet in the academy an hour before the test. When the scholars gather, they find out that it was Jianying's trick to keep them confined in the academy, so they won't make it to the examination hall in time. He's doing this to educate Henry of assignment. A while laterally, Henry arrives at academy and finds out about Jianying's plan. He lets the scholars free and fights all of Jianying's people to stop them from harming the children. They escape and snappily make their way to the examination hall while Henry fights Jianying. While they're fighting one-on-one, -on -one, Jianying reveals that he was the Zhou who Henry had thrown water balloons at when he was little. It turns out that since Henry broke his arm, he wasn't suitable to contend in a big music competition. Ever since the incident, he hasn't touched a piano and blames Henry for ruining his dream. Henry tries to reason with him but is attacked yet again. They struggle to get a hold of a cutter. At last, Henry gets a chase to kill him but doesn't do it. He asks for remission for what he did when he was little and walks down. The scholars reach the examination hall at the right time and complete the test. Cut to a many weeks laterally. They all pass with flying colors. Jianying starts to play the piano again but has a lot to exercise before he gets as good as he used to be. Bruce recovers snappily and promises to attend the coming time's entrance test. The star is also pleased because the board decides to give them a 20% perk fund, because their scholars did veritably well in the entrance test. Henry returns to tutoring and does the fire sprinkle trick on another batch of scholars. This is an action drama comedy film called Big Brother. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to watch more scene summaries like this, turn on notifications and press the like button to support us.